We must understand that our present system did not envision the level of violence and viciousness among young offenders today. These are not the Cleaver kids soaping up some windows. That is why I will introduce legislation to require that those between the ages of 13 and 17 who commit certain violent crimes, such as rape, murder, and aggravated battery, be tried and prosecuted as adults in superior court. Twenty-five years ago, Georgia created the toughest juvenile justice system in America. Children as young as 13 could be prosecuted as adults and then sent to prison for decades or even the rest of their lives. We help local systems. This Get Tough approach was championed by Zell Miller, then the governor of Georgia, who described young offenders in terms that today would be considered racially coded. Punks, hoodlums, thugs. I also want to modernize our juvenile justice system to crack down on those young punks who commit violent crimes. A quarter century later, this punitive approach has failed an investigation by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution found. Georgia teenagers commit roughly the same proportion of violent crimes today as they did in 1994. The young offenders who receive the stiffest sentences are the most likely to commit additional crimes once they are released. And African Americans, in particular young black males, are disproportionately given the toughest sentences. African Americans account for about one half of all juveniles arrested in Georgia each year. But among the juveniles prosecuted as adults and sent to prison, four of every five are black. Those teenagers enter the brutal, chaotic world of Georgia's juvenile prisons. In these facilities, officially known as youth development campuses, violence is a daily reality, perpetrated not just by the teenage inmates, but also by the corrections officers paid to guard them. The Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice has fired dozens of officers for using excessive force, for punching and kicking and choking inmates, sometimes when they're in handcuffs. Surveillance video shows officers forcefully slamming prisoners into concrete walls and floors. One officer who was involved in an incident that left a prisoner with a concussion defended his use of force. He said the youth in this incident, quote, was just put on the floor a little harder than he would like it. Very rarely, the Department of Juvenile Justice prosecutes its officers for using excessive force. The three officers in this incident lost their jobs, but none faced criminal charges. The failings of juvenile justice in Georgia were exposed in 2018 when a teenager named Jaden Myrick was charged with the fatal shooting of 32-year-old Christian Broder outside the Capital City Club in Atlanta's historic Brookhaven neighborhood. Myrick has pleaded not guilty and is being held without bond. By the time of the shooting, Myrick had passed through every level of the juvenile justice system a journey that demonstrated how that system is at once too lenient and too harsh on young offenders. When he was 13, he was arrested for fighting at school. When he was 14, he was charged with burglary. But instead of sending him to detention, a juvenile court judge ordered him to attend meetings of either a chess club or a homework club. Just two weeks later, Myrick robbed a woman at gunpoint. In juvenile prison for that robbery, he led a gang and once beat another inmate so severely that the other youth needed several staples to close a head wound. But a judge set Myrick free after he served two years of a seven-year sentence. 
Finally, on July 8, 2018, Myrick showed up outside the Capital City Club in a stolen car. He pulled a gun and robbed Christian Broder and three others who were waiting for an Uber after a wedding reception. Myrick walked back toward the car. Broder followed. Myrick turned to face Broder, the gun still in his hand, and asked, do you really want to die over this? Myrick's path from petty crime to a murder charge shows that tough laws and harsh rhetoric have failed to address the root causes of criminal activity by young people in Georgia. Like many others, the more Myrick cycled through arrest, court appearances, and incarceration, the greater threat he became. Mm-hmm.